Now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. Online. I am Cheryl, your host, and today's conversation is going to be balancing and navigating the sacred and the secular. I am excited about this conversation because there are many artists, especially now when we are recording this or when we are, are talking about this, it's right at the beginning of the summer season where it is tour time it is festival time it is all kind of travel time there's a lot going on and while you are traveling or while you are touring and doing gigs it's so important to know how you can navigate between the secular and the sacred how you can make sure you're staying hydrated while you are out there using your gifts wherever you are called to use your gifts uh, again my name is cheryl duick and before i introduce our Yes, tonight, I want to introduce you, of course, to my wonderful co-host, Dale Borland. Dale! Well, hi de ho and welcome, everybody, to GMI Hub Online. And as Cheryl said earlier, it slipped with the tongue, but it really works out well for me. GMIHub.ca is our website, and that's some place I'd like to invite you to visit. Come be a part of the team by going to GMIHub.ca, get into the connect area, send us your email, and have a continuous good talk back and forth about whatever's going on in musical uh, situation and also if you have any updating um, information about your latest single or event coming up or thing in that you're producing a song and you want us to tell others about it let us know because if you let us know then we can put it in our hub happening that's right hub happening is what comes out every month once a month we send out in uh, kind of an email blast to everybody about what we're up to what's going on and what information we have to give to you. And uh, so it's gmihub.ca, check on the connect right there. Also, while we're there at gmihub.ca, I wanna let you be aware of, as was said at the beginning, there is a, a, a compilation CD coming together for this Christmas, uh, gmihub.ca. Just go to Family Christmas, click on the link right there, and you'll get all the information you need to submit your song to be on our project. That's right. If you have an original Christmas song that you would like to put on our project, we would love for you to do that. This is our fourth installment. Can you believe it? This is our fourth comp compilation CD we're putting together. It's been amazing. We've had artists from as far as way as Alberta, and you know some of the artists that we have in the States and one in the Philippines even, the last project we put out last year. So it doesn't matter where you are, We'd love you to be a part of our um, compilation. If you have a song that's not yet been heard by people, we want to get it heard. So, gmihub.ca. How many times can I say that in one conversation? gmihub.ca. Anyway, so right now we're on gmihub online, which is our YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching. And if you're on Facebook, hello, that's great to have you there. Don't forget to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube channel is be it'd be so helpful to us to get those numbers up. So you could be a part of our, our a team that's building this incredible resource for musicians and artists because really that's what we're here for. We got 120 odd videos on YouTube and we want to keep those as a resource for you if you're an artist who is trying to navigate through their the challenges of of the musical situation that you're in and you know there's we cover so many variety of of quite of, of topics uh, anything from licensing uh to grants to uh to songwriting producing and we have uh we have studio talk which talks about the the technical side of things which is like sometimes for me but it may be something you're into and so check them all out we'd love you to be a part of that so let's get into this conversation shall we thanks so much dale 
You do that so well. And I'm glad I was able to springboard your, your little speech there. <laughs> with the yeah, slip of my own tongue. <laughs> <laughs> well, guest panelists that we have tonight, I'm very excited about. A couple of them mm -hmm. you've seen before, but we also have a new person that has joined us as well. So I'll start with our new guy. Um, new to our panel is studio and touring bass player, Curtis Freeman. He's coming all the way from Mississauga, Ontario. Hmm, a nice oh. town from what I remember. <laughs> And we are so glad that Curtis is able to spend time with us. He has played for a variety of local and award-winning artists. And I guess he's just had today off, so we were able to get him. So thanks so much, Curtis, for joining us. Say hi. Yay. Thanks for having me on board. And I'm, uh, uh, so <laughs> I was just saying, make sure you unmute your mic. <laughs> and returning, returning to our panel, you may remember from our episodes of All That Jazz, where we had um, we had a couple of guests there, and they are back with us. Uh, double bassist Duncan Hopkins is with us, and hello, Duncan. There you are. Hello. Did I say your name? Yep. Right? Duncan Hopkins. I did say your name. Okay. And um, yep. and Elizabeth <laughs> Shepherd is back, who is a jazz singer, classical pianist. She is also back. Um, so welcome, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you so Elizabeth. much. It's great to be back. Oh, so, it's so great to be here. And, and how appropriate. We're talking about touring and you're just finishing a tour right now. So this is awesome <laughs> to have you here right in the middle. She's sitting <laughs> yeah. in her car. I was like, I'm just coming from a tour. I'm on my way. Which is <laughs> 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 pretty awesome. <laughs> Getting so, very real. So, uh, very real, yes. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're able to to stop along the way and just to have this conversation with us. So, um, I just wanted to start with this with this question. I mean, we've we've talked about and this. This is a springboard, as I was saying earlier. This is kind of a springboard from our all that jazz conversation, where we were talking about well, we were talking about jazz, and then we did end up venturing into how when you are using your gifts and talents in other locations how are you i'll call it spiritually hydrated and we thought well let's have this conversation actually elizabeth actually suggested that let's have this conversation about how you navigate the sacred and the secular so so i want to ask what that means actually to you and elizabeth i'm going to start with you because i know that this was a springboard from the conversation and you were inspired by this so what exactly did that mean to you to say let's talk about navigating mm -hmm. the secular and the sacred or maybe i said it the wrong way secular the sacred and the, mm -hmm. and the secular yeah share that from your heart yeah i mean i've always had trouble um having these sort of discrete boundaries between secular and sacred because i have to say i've found some of my deepest spiritual moments of connection have been in sometimes in secular environments right or not explicitly sacred environments it could be something like a walk in nature or it could be something like um being at a concert that is not a christian music concert but feeling deeply moved and knowing that you know the holy spirit is there and present and, and at work um and so this sort of notion that God can only speak to us in explicitly sacred um, environments, I find uh, is something that I, I that challenges me. Um, and so that's, I guess, something that I wanted to start with sort of putting out there. Um, you know, it's interesting because I initially um, have all my sort of musical instruction and um, formation was done at church. And so my, my very, um, you know, my very idea of music is so intertwined with faith that I can't even like separate them. Um, but then at some point I felt that I had to step away because I felt that the church was becoming not a place of full grace and mercy for all, but that there were sort of restrictions that there were some people who were more welcome than others and some who categorically weren't even open, you know welcome um and then i've sort of made my way back to to um not to faith because it was always there but to the church and and found that now the church is a place of uh, uh that is more accepting than sort of um the secular world and which i think is how it should be um and so I feel like it's always been important for me to maintain that connection um, at all times with God in whatever way that I can. And, you know, that's um, that could be 
I mean, on tour, it's like daily devotions or something, you know, something like that, or just taking a, a moment to like step away from the band and go for a walk and have a moment of reflection and prayer. And um, so that I feel that I have something to bring to the table afterwards, because I feel like as, as a musician, my one job is to give and to get out of my own way and allow God to speak, you know, um, <clears throat> not that I'm, um, I don't have any grandiose illusions about that, but just that music speaks, God speaks through music. And so I just want to be the, like the channel and not get too in, into my head and that kind of thing. So I realized there's a lot that I'm throwing out there and I thought I'll just throw a few, you know, um, departure points. And that's sort of what I've been mulling over since we, we talked about this, um, I guess a couple months back about how, how to navigate the spiritual and secular um, in music, on tour, you know, and what we do. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, great. And that that's what I wanted you to share and that was awesome. And and Duncan, from your perspective, I mean, I know you heard that beginning too. Was that the similar experience like what what Elizabeth was sharing is that similar for you as well? Um yeah, not not so much. Uh I mean, uh, same with with Elizabeth in that uh it's it's challenging. There's no question about it. Um and and if you remember, I, I think I talked a little bit about it. I, I know you guys were a little surprised that uh, I was a uh, I grew up in the Salvation Army and still attend, but uh, I was fully uniformed and in the band, and I was just starting to learn to play the double bass and uh, was working, and of course I was working in clubs and that didn't go over well, and and they asked me to make a choice, and this is in the early '90s, I guess, so maybe things are different now. Um, but my choice was to uh, not not leave the church, but but to uh, go out of uniform and and, and perform, uh, you know, as as a profession. And I've tried a couple of times to uh, through the church, I guess, to you know, working at music camps, uh, well, volunteering. Uh, that's that's the other part of it in the Salvation Army. The musicians do not get paid at all, so uh, uh, so I do I do play sometimes in the you know the the worship team uh, at at the church. I do perform occasionally. I did once with Elizabeth at uh, Roy Thompson Hall for their Christmas with the Salvation Army. I I uh, and sometimes uh, you know that I mean that was paid, but there are there are many things that are not and. So for me, they're, they're, uh, it was it's kind of a forced separate uh, entity in that, in that my professional life, my paid life is almost purely secular. And my, uh, and sort of my, my life at church is my life at church. And they're, they're almost very separate. I mean, I've tried to bring them together a couple of times <laughs> to varying degrees of success, but uh, uh uh, it has just that's the way it has gone and so I have you know those different parts of my life and I'm I'm fine with that I don't I don't think I need to try and force one on the other either way to be honest so right. Right. And okay. now Tom you're coming in fresh hearing this what's your reaction to all this and what's when you even saw the oh, title Curtis? what does that mean yeah. to you yeah. yeah Curtis did I say that night <laughs> So Tom, I, think you called me, I think you called me Tom, but that's all right. Oh, oh uh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm so sorry. Just a, just a side note. I have a twin brother, so I get my name wrong 50% of my life. So it's, it's all, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but his name's not Tom, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm the bass player. So you get, you know, overlooked often and i'm only no. i'm only a single bass player i'm not like a double bass player like duncan <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the, um, i do both i'm, I'm single yeah. and double oh, uh, it's not at the same time right. single and double the triple threat so there the, you go <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. but the yeah the balance is just um it's not a balance to me i i really try to like live my life very seamlessly i try there was someone who was super influential on me when i was a kid a friend of my parents that would 
come over and I noticed that he would talk to me the same way he talked to my parents and he talked to my grandfather. I'm like, I want to be like that. So I really try to just from that strange thing, try to be the same person to whoever I'm talking to mm -hmm. in whatever environment I'm in. And that's worked pretty well to move seamlessly through church circles and secular circles. And, and, you know, my, my father was a, a carpenter and he was not a Christian carpenter that only built churches. And it, there's, is there such a thing as a Christian dentist that only does Christian's teeth? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's, it's strange to like, uh, consider that you're, you know, we're called to go into the world, you know, not to be in a vacuum and it's and to be light, you know? So it doesn't, I don't mean that I'm only playing, um, you know, hymns at, at, uh, at clubs or on cruise ships or on tours. It's, I'm hired to play whatever, but I, I've been known that we did a, a music festival in, um, in Mississauga, their big music awards show, the Marty's. And we played, uh, we threw a couple, we were doing instrumental music, my brother and I, we threw some hymns in there or not hymns, but like worship, praise and worship songs. And I said, let's do this because it's beautiful. There's some beautiful melodies and we're playing other melodies, you know, throw in some a Michael Jackson song or something. But I said, let's, let's watch the audience on these ones, because if they recognize it, they're going to be like, oh, <laughs> you know, and will we see some conviction there? Someone walking around with their <laughs> martini and going, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> That's but awesome. that, you know, that there's, um, there's a push and pull, but there's, I, you know, I love to be into different environments. It's easier to be a Christian at church. Someone that wants me to make a choice of, of, you know, you know, there, I also on the flip side, I haven't been in a situation where the church said, hey, if you uh, choose the church or secular or you're not playing here, but I did get a, a gig with a band um, and they had a development deal with Sony Music and they recorded at this amazing studio and they had this, um, they were destined for greatness and they hired me as a bass player. I auditioned, I got the gig. They said, oh man, we're, we're happy with you. And the, and they said, you have the gig as long as you're not a, uh, they said, as long as you're not a serial killer or a, a, a charismatic Christian. And I said, well, I have not killed anyone yet. Um, <laughs> however, I am a Christian. And you know, you don't want to say, but you'd never know it. <laughs> right? yeah, you, right. you, want to say, you know, I'm not preachy, but I'm, I am a Christian. And, um, and then I got a call the next day. Yeah. You just, you didn't get the gig cause wow. your values didn't align with or your views or something. And, and, uh, it was kind of devastating, but cause I did get the gig and then I got it kind of taken away. Now I haven't heard those guys on the radio or anything. So maybe it's, but you know, they're, um, you know, there's they're, those, that's a, that's a one-off story for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's, it's great that you brought up something that, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, uh, you talk about consistency as you were the same person, uh, in, in both environments. And I think that that might be like back in the eighties, Whenever uh, our, my buddies were in bands and stuff, they were trying to do the bar scenes to make some money, and they were trying. And it's just, and it was such a um, back then. It was different. I mean, they they give you beer instead of money, or or the environment was so full of cigarette smoke and all that kind of stuff. So it was a little bit different environment, and Christians used to view that as being, oh, he's backsliding, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And and it's uh, I understand that, but being on the side of the musicians and being with those guys, it takes a real strong Christian to be in that environment and be consistent, like you were saying. Um, so I can understand that for that time. Nowadays, I don't think that there's the same tension um, and people don't have that, uh, I, I may be wrong, but I don't think the bands have that same mentality of, uh, you know, they're, you know, let's go out and let's, you know, 
party, you know, it's, um, maybe, well, some do, but I'm just, a, and from a Christian's point of view, they're accepting, uh, maybe I'm wrong, guys, you can speak to this, um, that people in the band are more accepting of people that uh, don't partake in that kind of a lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think you're right. I think it has shifted. And what Duncan was saying did resonate. Like, I, 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 I know what you're talking about, Duncan, because I, I felt when I told my parents I wanted to become a musician, there was certainly this like, oh, <laughs> this reticence. I was partly because it's a very difficult lifestyle. You know, it's it's very mm. uncertain and there's no stability. Um, but I think there was also this like jazz, like that's the devil's music. And you're picturing like heroin overdoses and like shady bars and um, and, you know, the Salvation Army being a teetotalist organization, it was like there was an active uh like people my parents would go into taverns or bars when they were becoming salvation army officers um to go and like save people um those same people that we would you know theoretically be playing to playing music to so there was definitely um uh the sense in which it was like not cool um and i felt that there was a shift in my parents after um, my older brother, uh, who's five years older, was in a car accident and he broke his neck and was paralyzed. And that was like a, a, a massive pivotal moment for our family. And I, I wouldn't say it was a crisis of faith, but a moment of like deeply drawing upon faith and, um, and like crying out to God, like, what, what, what is this? You know, what, what, what's going on? Um, and I saw their faith, they had to wrestle with these questions. And I feel like it grew after that and it opened and their hearts opened. And um, I, it seems like I may be trivializing their experience, but you know, um, I think there can be moments also where society changes, but also our own hearts change. Uh, and my parents' heart, my heart, you know, um, so these changes occur on, on multiple levels and, and we sort of see things differently in terms of uh, what is truly important here? You know, what is it to be a witness? Is it to be like, a, um, to, to um, what does it mean to be a Christian in, you know, uh, across the board in all environments? Is it, is witnessing like being, um, saying this is how you should live or is it just like listening to someone and hearing them out is it being authentic is it bringing love and joy and and hope and in, into any situation that you can um and i guess you know it's sort of something that um i saw my parents work through and i felt like i've had to work through um but i just wanted to to, to sort of loop back to what duncan was talking about because i i do um i do hear you duncan on that that it, there was a divide and and there's less of one now, and I don't know if I can chalk it up to society changing, mm -hmm. me changing, um, the people who I sought affirmation from having their hearts change, uh, you know, not totally, or maybe all. And yeah, I hear that. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear that. Now, now, what's interesting, I will say this, like the, again, the time that we're doing this, it's, it's actually a holiday weekend it is uh you know canada day has just gone by and american holiday is just coming up so happy canada day for those who are in canada and happy independence day for those who are watching from the u.s and happy whatever holiday it is uh in the other rest of the world <laughs> if it is a holiday for you um and it's interesting because one of the things that i've done uh that we did to celebrate canada day was we went to toronto uh, because we learned that there was uh, some celebration down at uh, Young and Dundas Square, which is a, a tourist, uh, I guess, a concert area, but it's an outdoor concert area, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And so we thought, okay, let's just go. And the reason why we went is because we heard there were certain artists that we knew of, some of them who have been on our program. And then we thought, wow, that'd be awesome to see them actually in person. So let's do this. Let's go and support them. So we went down there and to my wonderful surprise, it was a Canada Day celebration put on by the Salvation Army. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I didn't know they did this, you know, kind of idea. Awesome. And so I thought, yeah. wow, this is this is this is a great setup because I'm going, we're gonna have Duncan, we're gonna have Elizabeth, they're from the Salvation Army background. So uh, <laughs> what do we say? <laughs> and so 
So um, to, to your question there, Elizabeth, I think there is some change happening. And, I, and here's, here's what I'm going to say. I, I, I think of God, where, I try to have a God's eye view on this and go, you know what? God probably looks down on all of what we're talking about from, from even from 20 years back and, or 30 years, I guess it would be back. And, you know, he sees, he sees where everyone was, where they were at. And yes, there was a huge, uh, um, as, as Dale said, there was a huge divide. I mean, even Christian rock bands playing rock music were shunned by churches because it was rock music. It wasn't communicating in a music style that they agreed with. So they shunned these people. But yet, if you were to hear those rock songs today and look at the lyrics, it was all preaching. Like, I mean, they preached about the Bible. They, they actually sang songs where they were telling people, you got to turn to God or, or you're going to go to hell. Like they literally were, were preaching the Bible. They were throwing Bibles out at the audience. It was part of their thing. And yet the church shunned them, you know? And I thought, you know, I, you know, I didn't learn about it until later on in life, but I went, this is really weird that the church would shun that. And then when I heard your stories back in April, Duncan and Elizabeth, I was shocked. And, and Duncan, you recalled my shockness. I was like, really? You know, um, that, that jazz music was seen as the devil's music. I went, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I've never heard that before. But, but it was an eye opener. And that's why I was glad, uh, Elizabeth, when you said, let's talk about this. Because I said, this is very real. Like, this is something that, that there are musicians that could be watching right now that can resonate exactly with what Elizabeth is saying, what Duncan is saying, and what Curtis is saying right now. You are using your gifts and talents in different areas. Some of you are even struggling with how am I being looked at if I'm singing, I, I, I'm in the church and I'm singing and then, but last night I was singing at a bar, I was at a corporate event where they had, you know, alcohol and all this other stuff but but it was my gig and I had to do this and you know you're feeling this struggle and you're going god how are you looking at me are you looking at me like i'm i'm uh, double having double standards the standards are only doubled if you yourself are struggling with whether or not um you are wanting to follow the the ways of the world or the way towards god but if your heart is God, I want to do everything I'm doing to glorify you no matter where I'm at, then you know what? You're okay. You're doing what God's calling you, calling you to do. You're using your gifts and your talents where you are supposed to use them. And God will honor you in, in wherever you're playing them, wherever you're using them. Mm -hmm. God will honor you. And if you're put in a situation that's not comfortable, he will provide a way out. Curtis gave a perfect example of that, you know, by saying, you know, he got the gig. Awesome. He got a gig, but I'm a Christian. That would have probably been an uncomfortable situation. It was for those other people. So they said, uh, no dude, we don't want you. So, you know, but, but I look at that and go, you know, it works both ways in terms of these realms. I, I don't want to sock them as they're different, but they are different realms that are actually making the choice of who they want inside their realm. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I want to go back to this question of um, when, and, and I mentioned this because of those of you who are torn, like, like Elizabeth, you've been on tour. Um, Duncan, I, I think you've been on tour. You've also toured, if I'm not mistaken. And Curtis, I know you've been on tour. So I wanted to ask this question. With the demands of a tour, and, and I... I, maybe I'm fantasizing this a little bit, but in my mind, a tour has a lot of demands, time demands. Um, you, you have to you have to travel, so you, so you're you're traveling quite a bit and probably great distances. You have to be at sound checks. You have to rehearse. Um, you probably have meetings along the way. Um, I don't know. Like I, maybe I'm fantasizing this a little bit, but assuming that that there's so many demands and maybe this much time for sleep. How do you keep yourself, I'll call it hydrated or charged with God? How do you, what are some of the things you do to keep yourself strong in the Lord? Curtis, why don't we start with you today? Yeah, I just, um, go ahead. 
Well, sorry about that. Okay. No good. Um, for me, it's it's just um, it's just everyday life where God's with me. You know, we're and it's a uh, you know it, um, sometimes busy is a badge of honor for for musicians, and they're happy to be on tour, and it's uh, to go on a, a tour bus or a plane or load up the van, whatever your thing is. It's it's wonderful, and travel's wonderful, and and that's what you um, um, kind of dream of doing when you're becoming a musician. For me, it was often what's not just being in a recording studio, it'd be on a stage or being on, I've, I've been lucky to be in 50 different countries traveling with, with music, but, and it's always like, oh, look at this. And you see, you have a more open worldview because you see more of the world and you see that God is everywhere. And he's, and, and if you are in, um, I think uh, it's just a natural thing to lean on God when you're in a time of need or in an uncomfortable situation or a new situation. And, and it's like um, the sharing this, God, look, let's do this or thank you for this. Th being thankful and grateful is awesome. And, you know, I've, most tours that I've been on and I've been on cruise ships and that where there's a lot of downtime too. So there's lots of time for podcasts or devotions or talking to meeting other people and and um so um to get my spiritual batteries charged is not um uh, so much of a chore like my community is not tied to like the home church so that i go to I, I think it's good to have some stability and some consistency to go to the same place instead of just floating where you can't really make community because I believe community is super important. But now too, just like this, there's um, there's community everywhere. There's online community. There's there's chat groups. There's WhatsApp app groups and and social media groups as well as um, you can call anybody over the internet now and you can stay connected. And it's never been uh, uh, easier to meet people. So so I and to have spiritual content and music and and uh um, it's available yeah yeah, yeah i think that's a, a great yeah because you have an opportunity through social media and connections through internet to continue those relationships in that community um so yeah for sure absolutely and duncan you were going to say something as well well duncan? I Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know that when I'm traveling, uh, uh, it's so very difficult to connect with uh, oh. with any any kind of home community. It's very difficult. Um, so I must admit that I I'm I'm not great about that. I'm so super focused at trying to do the job at hand, and uh, right. that that maybe I'm not as connected as I as I could be, even to my own needs. You know. Um, so I must say, I'm not, I'm not great at that. I do want to just, just sort of reverse a little bit. One is that, uh, I was down there this weekend down at, uh, at, uh, Young and Dundas and Massey Hall. Uh, oh. my wife was performing all weekend with, uh, uh, with a Salvation Army, uh, choir. And, oh. uh, and my son was playing there with a, with a band as well. So, uh, we were well represented there. Uh, awesome. But what we were talking about earlier about the um, that maybe things are different now and how the world, the church viewed jazz as a kind of a devil's music. Mm -hmm. um, definitely my parents and that generation saw that. And uh, mm -hmm. and mostly I haven't seen that. But I, I mean, I, I mean, I can't say 100 uh, percent. I remember after a gig at the Rex, somebody said, hey, you know, come with us, we're going down to so-and-so's house. And we went, and the next thing I know, they're all on their knees doing cocaine. And I was just kind of, oh my gosh, what what's, oh. what happened here? And, and, it, and it took a left turn and I just, you know, I left, it's, what can I do? And, uh, and, and these are guys I deeply respect and wanted to be around them, but I just, I went, well, this is not my scene. So 
And I, I just did a recording a few months ago with a, a couple of young people, like under, under 30. And, uh, and I took the guitar player home. I drove him home and he, we were talking about these differences of, of, uh, time that things are different now. And he, he said to me, and I, and I think he's right about this. He said, you know, my generation has zero tolerance for people who behave badly. He says, cause everything is filmed now. Everyone always has a camera in your face or a video in your face and mm -hmm. everything is filmed. He said, so my generation has zero tolerance for that kind of behavior. And I, I was a little taken aback, but I, I think he might be right. Uh, that the generation now actually are, are, are uh, you know, for better or worse, are, are able to uh, uh, equip themselves, sort of armor themselves uh, for, for what's around them, which is actually kind of nice. Wow. Yes. So, hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I've I've definitely seen that too um, among the kids, as I say now, because I'm 46. <laughs> um, I feel like yeah, there's a there's a real um, not just uh, with lifestyle, but sort of an awareness that like um, like stewardship about with the earth, you know, for example, and just this sense of like mm -hmm. we need to really take care because nothing is given, nothing we don't take anything for granted anymore, and and we when I say we mm -hmm. like you know, people who are 10, 15 years younger than me, there's this real sense that like um, a certain gravity to the situation and uh, that I, I don't think I had, you know, um, I, I, I see that too. Um, and, and in response to your question about how to sort of stay, uh, what was the word you used? Uh, nourished or fed or um, hydrated. Hydrated. On the road. hydrated, yeah. hydrated. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I find I have this app that's uh, put out by a Jesuit uh, community called uh, Lectio 365. And they're these wonderful, sometimes they have series, but um, it's great because you can take it on the go and um, I do it every day. And it's sort of this consistency that's something that I do online at home or, you know, I can download it on my phone and take it uh, on the plane. Um, there's that at Lectio 365 and then uh, Pray As You Go. And just having that touchstone, that consistency at the beginning of every day, or at some point in the day, if I can't, like, um, I find touring grueling, you know, it's like you drive, especially touring Canada, you drive six hours, you sound check, you wolf down dinner, you play, you go to bed, you wake up, repeat, like, <laughs> there's no downtime. Um, so I find just having that consistency. And if I have a day off on a Sunday, I'll try to get to church, just wherever I am, just to have that connection because like you said community is so important and even if it's not my community just the sense of like the community of believers you know and stopping in and singing in a different context um i find really fuels me like singing with other people raising our voices uh in 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 worship and, and adoration um i find that helps too um and it's not you know i don't look for a, a salvation army church like <laughs> there's no salvation army church in Caslo, BC, or, you know, it's just what's open, <laughs> what's got a service this morning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I find for me too, it's it's been beneficial to be transparent about that, that need of mine with my bandmates to say like, sorry, I gotta, I gotta take time for like my, my quiet time now, I, I'll be over here, you know, or, and I'm the band leader. So it, you know, it's kind of like, sorry guys, you're on your own for 20 minutes while I go do this, or um, we're gonna make a pit stop here because I wanna go to church or, you know, um, and I, you know, I find they, they get it, they respect that. And it's it's a give and take with all your bandmates. Like it's a, it's a very taxing mm -hmm. situation being on the road. And so, and they'll conversely say, we need good coffee every morning. So I'm like, fine, let's wake up 30 minutes early so we make sure you get good coffee in you, you know? Um, mm -hmm. sort of a, a transparency with, with my bandmates of what, what my needs are and, and then some of them are spiritual, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That actually was leading to another question I had was, which was, do the people that you play with, um, like your band members or whoever you are, you, who are, whoever you're called to play with, um, do they know that you're a Christian? Do they actually know your belief system? Now you just said you're pretty transparent about your spiritual needs, Elizabeth. So they, they pretty much know outright that 
you're a believer and there are certain things that you need to do to just maintain that. Is that what I'm hearing correctly? Yes? Yeah, you know, when I was like one tour a few months ago, did it? Is it frozen? Uh, oh. No, we're good. No, okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, one tour maybe, or two or three years ago, I was like, I was reading through the Bible, and I was like, I'm going to finally read the Bible cover to cover. Um, I, and I didn't get through all the way through it, <laughs> it you know, um, just sort of jumped around. And my basis was like, you're reading the Bible? Like, like yeah, yeah, I'm reading the Bible. Like, you know, because we would sometimes have like an Airbnb together with like the whole band. And um yeah, and I can tell they're a little intrigued and, you know, some of them are definitely atheist and like, or agnostic and just, um, but there's a deep respect. And I feel like that's one thing that you get with musicians. I feel like, I, not to do a blanket statement about musicians, but I find generally the musicians I've met are, are open-minded and respectful. Um, and so, you know, it's like, cool, that's what you're into, okay. And I also invite them, like, when I have, I was also at this um, big Salvation Army event on the weekend, and I actually played for one of the gala dinners, and I invited my musicians to come play with me. I'm like, hey, we're going to be doing some worship tunes. Here's the chart, you know, and just to bring them into my world, too, and, and let them see, like, these are these are my people, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Duncan, mm -hmm. how about you? When you play with... Uh... Uh, different bands or different locations do people outrightly know that you're a christian or uh or not yeah i'm, I'm not really sure sometimes i mean it, it's obvious I, I i play it's a little different as a bass player I, I mean i play with a different band every night and and i'm doing you know like uh six to eight gigs every week right now uh and it, i mean sometimes eight gigs on a weekend it's a little crazy but it's um you don't have that same level of interaction that elizabeth is talking about like when you're on tour i have a couple of tours coming up and often i'm sort of on my own i i uh with a double bass i'm sort of uh i mean it's, it's i need i need support but it's usually never there <laughs> uh, oh, wow. so and sometimes i'm dry, i'm flying into a city and then i'm right back out again like there's no I'm not having that same level of interaction, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I would say that that uh, the people uh, you know that maybe like in my band they would know only because mm -hmm. we spend a bit more time together. Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of people, it, it, like I really, I see them that night, and then I may never see them again. So uh, it's likely we haven't had a moment to even you know find out if someone's married or not. So uh, right. finding out a belief system seems pretty unlikely in that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. You're like a um, pinch hitter there. Just, just there. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, that most of my career has, has been that, actually. Uh, I feel like I'm sort of everybody's second call because it's whoever can't make it, they know that, you know, I can come in and I, I'll figure it out and I'll get it done. But it's, uh, yeah. uh, which is fine. I'm happy with that. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't always get to know uh, a lot of your bandmates. But on, on some of the bigger tours, yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. the, those conversations happen when you're in a car, you know, traveling over two and three weeks. Conversations are going to happen uh, that maybe even mm -hmm. are uncomfortable, and uh, those are actually the best moments on on tours. Uh, finding out where people stand, and and but you have to be in a car together, so you know mm -hmm. uh, you have to be understanding of of other views and and uh, well, mm -hmm. just any any other point of view. Right. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So Curtis, I'll ask. Let's let's talk ahead. about. Yeah, let's talk about Curtis in the same frame of mind. Huh? Would, the, would the people in your band know that you're a believer? No one must know my terrible secret. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. I, I even got tattoos. Yeah, tattoos. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Um, kind, of, kind of like Duncan, although I'm not... Uh, 
you, you sound incredibly uh, accomplished for all these gigs. That's awesome, Duncan. Just I play old. with um, uh, quite a rotation also of, of players. So it would also kind of uh, be dependent on how much time we spend together. You know, it's it's interesting. I've played, I've played with what I would deem very secular bands and that would pray before a show. And I, and I've been, I played for Christian Music Awards where the bands would have whiskey on the bus. You know, so it's like, <laughs> it, it goes back to a few different, uh, uh, you know, and and all situations are, you know, just, you know, uh, like. They're just all wonderful in different ways, right? But um, uh, it does. If it comes up, it comes up. But I, it's not a secret. I don't know how many times I'm playing late and saying, "Okay, I have to play at church the next morning," or telling church that I've been playing the night before, or you know, some things come up. If you're, if people people often ask if you if you're a Christian if you don't drink. You know? mm. Oh, we got shots for. Oh no, thanks. I'm. I'm good. Are you a Christian? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> or the correlation is there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, and there was like long seasons of my career where I did drink too, to be fully transparent. And that was all conversations too. You know what I mean? So, um, and so, yeah, people, it's not a, it's not a secret, but it's also not like, oh, you're not feeling well. Let me pray for you. You know, right. <laughs> you know, right, it's, exactly. Um, I want everything to be like pretty conversational, and and I want to know where other people are at too, right? So, right, right. I was I was gonna say, so, you know, um, go ahead, Dale. You were gonna say something. No, you're gonna say something. No. Yes, I was. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking a lot today. Oh, uh, you know, I. I guess as I'm listening to you, I was gonna I was gonna ask this. I know, especially in Curtis and Duncan's place, where you're kind of it's um, uh, what's the word I was gonna say? Very it's it's very short times with people, you know, because you're you're at a gig, you play, you do your thing, you leave, you know, you you can't already like, hi by the way I'm a Christian and and walk away. You you don't do that, and that's we don't expect you to do that, of course. Um, and then I was gonna ask is. If they, if you don't have those opportunities, do people still look at you and go, "Something's different about that guy." You know, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but this guy's different. Have you ever encountered mm -hmm. that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And I know Curtis, you you just said it like, uh, "No, I don't need a, I don't need shots." Are you Christian, <laughs> you know, kind of idea. Um, but you know, are, are there other situations where it's similar to that? Like you just, you know, you, you're hanging out with these people, um, or you're playing with them. Even if it's for a short period of time, do they ever have you ever encountered them saying, "Yeah, this guy's you're a little different," or "You're kind of cool." Don't know what it is about you, but you're kind of cool. And then they just kind of walk away. Have you ever had that at all, or no? Well, no, not so much. I mean, I I hope that there's a a consistency. I mean, I, I like what Curtis was talking about there the the consistency mm -hmm. of regardless yeah. of what's going around you you're still the, the straight line. And, yeah. uh, and I know for me, it's family. And that's what, what definitely, uh, you know, uh, keeps me uh, focused. Mm -hmm. But because uh, I'm a, you know, I'm a model to, to two young men now. And uh, uh, so I have I have obligations. So, so whether it's that they see that I'm a, a father, or whether they see uh, you know, I mean, they can choose to see what they want to see. Uh, but I, I, I don't think people want to gravitate or not gravitate towards me one way or the other because of that. Uh, again, the, you know, uh, over, I mean, I've been doing this a while now. So you have people that you know well and, and, and naturally gravitate towards. And you hope that you have a cons consistency of, of a community that, that one know and maybe even share uh, those same values. And, uh, yeah. and I think for the most part I do, but I mean, there's definitely, uh, the, I mean, I, I know for sure there's been people over the years where I've just had to sort of cut them out of my life because they, 
I, I just I can't I can't have them in my life. They're, they're, it's just not good. Right. So, uh, do they know? Do they recognize? Do they? I mean, I can't I can't say for sure, but I, I would hope so. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, for sure. I, I'm I'm just th thinking of uh, another direction, if I could, is. Uh, Whenever you're on tour, whenever you're away from your family, and and, and how how hard is that for you, uh, or do you are you able to take your family with you? And whenever you get a chance to come back home, is there a sort of a sense of where have you been? I missed you so. Much. And how how taxing is that on you? Well, for me personally, it's never been easier than now because uh, one, my children have grown up. Uh, and two, so you know, having having Facebook and and just being able to communicate uh, face to face, uh, which is, you know, the first times I went away, I mean, I, I did a tour when I was newly married, so like you know, nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight, I went to Brazil with with uh, with a big band, and my wife managed to find the hotel in the city I was in and call them and managed to wish me happy birthday on this one day. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I couldn't even figure out how to work the phones to phone home. And she managed to get a hold of me. And I was, I was thrilled by that. But, uh, and, and I also remember coming back from England where they lost my instrument uh, on the flight. Oh. And I just said, you're going to have to find it. Cause if I can get home, I can give my, my new son, his first, his last bottle of the night before he goes to sleep. And that was far more important than finding my instrument at that time. And I was just, I was crying. <laughs> I was just, uh -huh. just like shedding tears because I was just so happy to be home. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be yeah. on tour. I'm happy to play, happy to work. But coming home is always, uh, uh, again, it's the grounding, right? It's, uh, for me, it, it's, it's family for sure. And that's, it's the grounding thing that allows me to sort of go off and do these crazy adventures once in a while. Yeah, I I still find it hard. My my daughters are six and eleven. Um, when my firstborn came, I was living in Ontario, and there was no um, maternity benefits for self-employed musicians at that time. And so, when she was six months old, six months old, we hit the road right away. I went on a three-week tour, and it just about did us in as a family. Like my husband and I underslept and um with this infant in tow and it was so difficult and then we got our rhythm and we toured together for the next three or four years you know i'd go on maybe three or four tours a year the whole family came and i loved it i loved that i would be able to go and do this thing that you know like do my thing and then come back to the airbnb at the end of the night or the hotel and have my family waiting and you know it takes a certain kind of husband to 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 come along and do that. He was a musician too before. Um, and so I owe so much of that to him. Then when my second daughter was born, we lived in Quebec and there was maternal benefits for one year. And so I just stayed put and relished that. And then the, the prospect at the end of that year of leaving to go on tour with the four of them was, it was ludicrous. Like there was no way we could do that. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I breastfed both my girls until they were well, two and four. And so, you know, just the logistics of that, it's like, okay, I'm going on the road and I have to bring a pump and I'm calling home to sing bedtime stories because, you know, mom is, is mom and dad is dad. Like, I'm not diminishing that, but there's a, like just the physiological, you know, um, bond there. Um, and so I, I found it really hard and my whole relationship to touring has changed profoundly. I used to, enjoy it so much and now it's always against this sort of backdrop of everything i'm missing um and it's been a a, a huge struggle like the, i i feel like i have not reconciled that still you know just coming back from uh, a tour out west that was seven days long and i had a gig in toronto and then i was there for three days and said to my family like would you want to come and meet me and you know, I'm underslept and, um, but just to be able to, to snuggle with them, it was like, okay, great. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel nourished again. I feel like I found a little piece of my, a big piece of myself. Um, so it's, it's very difficult and I don't know. Yeah. I have no 
<laughs> like if there are any moms watching any musician moms they they know or any women who are pregnant i'm like it's it's incredibly difficult there's there's no doubt yeah. about it and i you know you just do what you can and and realize that you're gonna fail a little bit at both but mm. you're also doing both and so you gotta practice some grace too you know yeah so i'm i bet you're glad your tour is over Yes, and now I'm going back on the road <laughs> next weekend for two shows, but I'm bringing my little one with me and my older one is going oh. to camp. So, you know, there's always yeah. like working it all out. <laughs> yeah. So, and Carson, what about months. you, bud? What about Curtis? I keep getting you guys mixed up. Sorry, Curtis. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I think I have it easier than everybody because I... I don't have kids. My wife and I don't have kids. So, um, it's just the two of us. So it makes it a lot, um, easier in that regard. I mean, we love each other. We miss each other, but also if, uh, my touring situation is not too tough at all. Like I was, uh, people had asked me, how do you do that? But I was just looked like I was gone forever, but we would just, uh, the guy I was playing with the most, we'd fly out every weekend and, basically flying every Thursday and back every Monday. And it was just, he was very family oriented too. So it was, we weren't gone for long. So you had like, like the best of both worlds, the home, sleeping in your own bed enough and hotels. <laughs> and, uh, but, mm -hmm. um, and I, I worked on cruise ships for a while too, when I was younger and, and um, missed a lot of birthdays and listen, every birthday every christmas it seemed but you know the trade-off wasn't too bad either you missed winters as well <laughs> so um so that's no, a good was, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't too bad for the travel i um yeah. kind of again like backtracking to something and i um duncan's point too and a, a question that came up about um how people will see you and and how they'll if they'll recognize god in your life um I'm just kind of going through this uh, realization lately that, that we live in a time where there's like um, no, we, we stay, everyone stays in their own lane and plays it really, really safe. So whatever you do, whatever you believe in, however you live your life is cool, but you know, keep it to yourself and keep staying in your own lane basically. And there's a lot, there's been a big thing. I know I work, uh, I teach at two colleges here when I'm, home in the at Centennial College and there's a big studio in Mississauga called Metalworks that I work there too. And um, the students, it was always like a, a big don't, there's no body sham, shaming, which is great. There's no, I hate the word slut shaming, and but I can sleep with whoever I want. I can eat whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. I can live however I want. But um, the truth is people are, People are attracted to discipline or the results of it. And, and where I'm going with that is with music, to be an incredible musician, to be a professional musician, you have to be at a high level. It's, it's not easy to make it as a musician. It's not easy to make it as a jazz musician for anyone else watching. And we have like two incredible musicians here. And I'm sorry, I haven't heard either of you play, but I, I already know you're both incredible. If you're doing this for a living and you're touring and, and that it's, and I study jazz like nonstop, but I, I'm too chicken to try to do it for a living and electric bass isn't, a, uh, you know, Your a wife. cherished instrument in that genre, which is my passion. But anyway, um, but we have a vehicle people, if people are attracted to your music and that's a, you know, then they're going to ask more about, about your life too. Like what, you know, they, that's why celebrities sell shoes and, and, and push products and <laughs> restaurants because people are, you know, and there's always a terrible thing when a celebrity is giving their political views and they're, you know, that always gets sticky. But if um, people will be attracted to us as musicians, you know, and, 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 uh, and if they find out a roundabout way and that's a vehicle, you know, God will use us in any way that way too. So I, and it takes a lot of discipline to get to a level of, of musicianship that, are, that will make you 
attractive. So when people are saying, oh, what that person's different, there's something different. Also, like God is in us. And I think especially in a, a jazz situation where like I've been hired for artists that I have to play like really uh, the bass line that's on the recording, right? And jazz musician or jazz music is music of the moment. And there's so much improv and it flows from out of you. Well, if God is in you, it's he's going to come out in your music. It will be people hearing something. There's something different. There's something in that, you know, if the creator of the universe is in you and you're creating, you know, you're going to, you know, there's some success in that too. So I think that uh, is just bound to, to turn some heads. But yes, when I'm touring, it's, it's, uh, I miss my wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, it I think it's great. You brought it. <laughs> I really appreciate your, 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 your closing thought there. Because I think that um, I'm going to try to be respectful of everybody's time because we're, we're past being uh, together for almost an hour. But um, I'd like to bring this to a close, but I'd like to also, in that vein, is there anything that you would like to say to artists who are out there that are um, maybe navigating that, that, that balance between the sacred and the secular? Is there anything that you would like to say to them that um, maybe through your experience or through things that you have gleaned from from those who are mentors to you who have done this journey or even a spiritual mentor in your life who's been able to speak into you is there something that maybe it's been said already but something that has yet to be said and, and, and you want to just let them know something from your heart if you could i would pick up on curtis what you said there that the creator um is at work um through and in spite of or you know with uh with us and so i feel like um the idea that we need to do something uh more can be crippling and that in fact i think it's as simple as just aligning ourselves and getting out of our own way to allow god to speak through us sometimes that that can be um you know, one of the best ways to to um, to be used and to be a channel um, that it doesn't need to be so thought out and so brainy, but just to to um, to really think of it as like this, you know, that we are inspired and we we share that which comes through us. Yeah, there's a sense of kind of organic thing that's happening as you just live your life in Christ. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Duncan, do you have anything think, to say on I that? I would just say, stay the course, you know, don't be distracted uh, uh, by all the things that can sway you in, I mean, in your faith and in your, in your life and music, uh, stay the course, you know, keep uh, mm -hmm. the straight and narrow. Don't be uh, swayed by the blinky lights that are over on the side, you know, uh, uh, stay the course. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I think that's that. really good advice, Duncan. And I, I think too, we, we kind of talked earlier about that the church, churches seem to be more open towards the, you know, musicians branching out in other areas i i mean when my parents were more like do jazz because jazz doesn't have any words and you can't they're not you know there's some songs straight note chaser and songs that are about drinking maybe but it's not like country music or um but um <laughs> you're so you're so down on country music dude <laughs> it's really like killing it yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like he said twice a lot of country country music, music. it's from the country of greece <laughs> lately so um <laughs> But, you know, I think, um, well, one thing that comes up, has come up a couple times, is that, quote unquote, secular artists and bands and other musicians are totally open and comfortable and, hey, it's cool if you're Christian, right? It's the church that's super closed-minded about, and we have to be kind of open and welcoming to people wherever they are. And there's, I heard some Tupac lyrics last year, and it's like, this guy went to church at one point. 
and you know his his content isn't like you know we don't sing it in church right and but elvis <laughs> did a gospel album and and willie or um johnny cash sang hymns and and bieber and selena gomez and bob dylan claimed to be christians and it doesn't mean that oh no they're not because of this or i saw this video like imagine the pressures on on some giant celebrities what they're trying to do something and 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 just finding someone where they are and someone might have had a bad experience in in church and that's why they find themselves like you know my music community or my church community wasn't didn't accept that i love striper as a band and that threw bibles out in the audience and yeah the i can't understand why the the lyric content says you know i'm always there for you and i love you infinitely like why is that a bad message from god so i think as Christians, like everyone's on a different uh, journey and, and God's, we're all his image bearers. He loves us like unconditionally. And, and I think just like, you know, just kind of being open to where, meet people where, where they're at and start the conversation and the journey from there and just be, you know, in certain areas of, of music and, and we have a couple of bass players here, you are in a servant role within the band. You know, so you carry that out through, and we we serve our audiences too, right? So, um, I think it's just it's it's just like so easy to be humbled musically. Like every all you need to do is be on social media for ten seconds. So, um, you know, if we come from a loving, humble, and and thankful place too, because we're it's just a beautiful. Thing to be able to do for a living so um sorry a lot said a lot there it's a new guy but it was yeah. nice to be part of this uh conversation and just to meet everybody and share thanks for listening no to need. what i had to say no need Thank to you. apologize for us that's what we're here for we're here to have these conversations Absolutely. and we're here to hear those thoughts and those opinions because i mean there are so many people that um, need to hear exactly what you just said. There are so many people mm -hmm. that need to hear exactly what all of you said, whether they yeah. just want to identify with your positions or whether they just want to just, you know, take in, like that. they will identify with you and be able to accept what you have to say because they go, yeah, I can relate to mm -hmm. this guy. I can relate to this gal. So, so no apology on that. And I really appreciate it. Yeah. Actually, as you were talking, I was resonating with that. And I just, I'll be honest, this whole conversation, I, I think there was a lead up to this uh, personally for myself because, like I said, I was downtown and I, and I saw what I saw with the, the, the event that the Salvation Army put on, which was done very, very well. Um, and then um, I was read, you know, scripturally wise, I was, I was brought to a scripture that reminded me again about the freedoms we have in Christ. And the fact that it was 1 Corinthians 10, verses 23 to 33, which Paul was just talking to the Corinthians and saying, you know what, you know what, you're free in Christ. You almost can do whatever you want to do, but whatever you want to do, not everything you want to do is lawful. Not everything you want to do is good, right? And, and saying it from the perspective of how is that going to affect somebody else? How, it's not about living for self, it's a living for somebody else. How is that going to affect them? And, and he ends in, in verse 31 by saying, whatever you do, whether you're eating, sleeping, whatever you do, you're doing mm -hmm. it for the glory of God, which reminds me, reminded me of how important that, uh, that vertical relationship is, right? And, and this goes back to what Curtis and Elizabeth kind of jumped on, which is if you have that vertical relationship and, and God is working in and through you, then whatever you're doing as you are, uh, you know, playing your instrument, playing your music, um, writing, or uh, even when you're cooking and eating, whatever you are doing, your that that spirit of God is just moving in and out of you. And I know that may, that might have sounded a little bit creepy for some people, but really, what's inside of you is going to come out, <laughs> pretty much, and and people will gravitate to that. They'll either say, mm -hmm. "Wow, you're kind of a cool." person like there's something different about you i like you or it's 
you creep me out <laughs> or you scare me or whatever the case may be. But, but really, it's um, when, when, when you're connected vertically um, with God, when you have that relationship with him. And for some people that are watching, that might seem a little bit strange to talk about. How can you have a relationship with God? Well, it's like having relationship with we're used to the horizontal relationship. We're used to, you know, having a buddy or having family. We're used to that. Well, there is a God um, that is 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 alive and well and wants to have that same relationship with you. Wants to chat with you. Wants to be intimately involved in your life. Yes, he's the creator of the entire universe. He holds it in the palm of his hand. That's how big he is. But he's also very intimate and wants to be very intimately involved in mm -hmm. your life and in what you do. He loves you enough to take to just accept you where you're at right now, right where you're at. You don't have to do anything to be special and you don't have to get your, your you know, clean your house in order for God to come. He'll take you from where you're at, but he loves you enough to not keep you there. He loves you enough mm -hmm. to journey with you. He loves you enough to, to help you through, to help you answer questions, to show you some stuff. Like, oh man, does he want to show you a whole lot of stuff. And oh man, does he want to just use your giftings and even show you whatever new giftings you have just to just to just help you blossom and 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 I want to say explode, but I don't want to say that in a negative way, but I, I think of fireworks when I think of that. But he just wants to use that for you. And so if you're watching this right now, I'm, I'm hoping that that you're encouraged by what I'm saying right now and encouraged by what um, Curtis and Duncan and Elizabeth have shared. You know, um, they've they've shared, they were authentic enough to say to you like, hey, you know, we've, we struggled with this area, but we know what keeps us going. You know, we mm -hmm. know that, that it's that relationship we have with God. And as Duncan says, there's also that relationship we have with the people around us, our families that keep that we're close to and that we love. And, and we know that we want to be an example for them. And when I look at that verse, but whatever you do, do for the glory of God, I think of that too. I like you guys, I have family and, and I want to be an example for my family as well as a mom, as a wife, I want to be an example for them and for anybody else I encounter. Um, I'm also a singer. No one else really knows that. I'm also a singer. So even when I'm singing, I want to give my best for his glory. But also I want to think about the people that are hearing as well and want to, to sing in a way and even sing songs in a way that would help and encourage them and make them feel good too. Make them feel comfortable. You know, and, and that's all about just living a life of, this vertical and and or well, I said that wrong. vertical and horizontal, which is why the cross is so important in our lives, because it talks mm -hmm. about the vertical mm -hmm. relationship as well as the horizontal relationship. We honor and live for God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That's what it's all mm -hmm. about. Curtis, Duncan, Amen. Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I think it, it, you guys are absolutely fabulous. Obviously, we're going to have you back sometime again. I mean, we'd love to have you back anytime. Maybe we'll have you guys come and play. I think that would be awesome to have you yeah, come and be play. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to catch you. We have to kind of kind of detour you. It's like, we got to be a part of the tour. <laughs> like, you don't mm -hmm. come here. Just, just to do some music with us. I think it would be absolutely awesome. And the challenge would be, I would love to hear you do some songs, um, uh, jazz style. I want to hear some jazz style songs. And now, I know jazz sometimes is with, with singing and without singing, but I just want to hear jazz style music. And I want to hear some, I actually want to hear some Christian songs in jazz style. I really do. Can you do that? I'll even get mm. Faith to come. Sure. <laughs> she will come yeah. because you yes. will be there. Faith, if you're watching, you got a date <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And Curtis, I, I, I like want to you take there the time. Too. Yeah, I like to take the time now to to also not only just thank our panelists, they're amazing for being here, but for you at home for watching. Uh, thank you for joining us in our conversation. I hope that there was something that was said that could uh, you could glean from and that you uh, really. Um, were able to absorb. And uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch uh, 
the show. If you haven't already done so and you're watching this on our YouTube channel, GMI Hub Online, please uh, subscribe and, and join in and be part of our family and help us grow this ministry. And uh, if you want to find out more about the GMI Hub, visit us on gmihub.ca. Check out our website. It's got all the kind of information you need to know about us, what we're up to and what we're doing. And I'd really like you to connect with us. There's a connect place you could put your email. We'd love to have a conversation with you and continue this dialogue in, in emails or whatever the case may be to connect with you. Um, also, we do have the, uh, the Christmas compilation uh, project coming up and it's coming up and we want you to be a part of it. Um, our deadline is July 18th, I believe. And we want to try and try to get August. your song in August. Sorry, I'll give you a, less than a month. Oh, sorry. It's August 18th. And we want to go to uh, Family uh, Christmas and you just click on there and you'll find out all the information you need. I'd love to have your original song on our project so um, we can help uh, you with all the other details around that if you just go check that out. And uh, also, uh, don't forget about our YouTube channel here as well. I just said that earlier. But anyways, I'm repeating myself. So sorry. I'll just be quiet. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate you very, very much. And thank you to all of our panelists for their incredible insight. And, uh, and it's been a great time to spend time with you. So I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs> so we will be back until next time. It's summertime, so we're taking some time off. But... Um, we will be back uh, off and on throughout the summer, so stay tuned. If you're subscribed to us, you will get notifications of when we're back. So until next time, have a great summer, and we'll see you soon. Bye! <laughs> now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. GMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2023 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4.